Greta Thunberg, welcome to the program. Thank you. You know, you've taken the world by storm. How did you start being an activist? What was it and, and when was it? I started this summer in August and I sat in front of the Swedish parliament uh, and I school striked for the climate. And then after that, I have sat every Friday. And so I'm going to continue to do that until Sweden is in line with the Paris Agreement. And how much support do you get? Do you get noticed when you are not in school and when you're sitting on the steps of the Swedish parliament? Yes, I mean, they, they support me and they support my message, but maybe not the part of me not being at school, but they help me catch up and so on. So they are supportive. So that's great. So you're not falling behind in your studies. What made you be so passionate about the environment? What was it that, that sparked that interest in you? I, my interest about the climate and the environment began at may, when I was maybe 10 years old. And my, my teachers in school told me that there's something called climate change and global warming. And it's caused by humans and our behavior. And I thought that sounded very strange um, because if that was so, if there was something that big that threatened our very existence, then that would be our first priority. We wouldn't be talking about anything else. But it wasn't our first priority. And, and I'm that kind of person who doesn't like when people say one thing and then do another thing. And that was the case with climate change. Everyone said that it's the most important issue of all and it's an existential threat. And yet they just carried on like before. And so I, I started reading about it. And the more I read about it, the more I understood. And once you fully understand the climate crisis, you cannot un-understand it, then you, you're stuck. You have to do something about it. Well, you know what? You have unstuck yourself and you've unstuck a lot of people and made them aware of this, of this crisis in a way that they perhaps weren't before listening to you. You made a big splash at COP24 in Poland and you made a big splash at Davos. And I want to play this little clip of you addressing all these world leaders at Davos. Adults keep saying, we owe it to the young people to give them hope. But I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I want you to act as if you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if the house was on fire. Because it is. Do you write your own speeches, Greta? I mean, it's really quite incredible, the words you use and the logic you use. You, lose, you use a logic that you would think adults would use, but they don't. And yet you're completely clear from A to B to C. Uh, yes, I write my own speeches, but since I know that a lot of my speeches will be listened to by many, many people, I have to have some people who have like input. And, and I also ask scientists sometimes, like, is, is this correct? And how would you um, put that in a phrase? And so I get help from people when I, when I ask for help. So what you do is you take the facts, um, not just what you believe or, or what you don't believe, but you take the facts and you try to make people aware of them. Um, I, I want to ask you about your own self and what it is about, about your brain and the way you see things and the way you, the wires are connected in your brain that allows you to put, you know, these pieces together and speak in a, such a logical way. I mean, you, you've talked about being diagnosed on the sort of Asperger syndrome on the spectrum. Is that correct? Yes, I have Asperger syndrome. And that means that I work a bit different. My brain works a bit different. And I, I see things like black and white and like I'm very logic and I like logic and so on. And, and yes, so I, I see the world a bit different. Uh, and so it's helpful for you. I mean, this, this, this unique way that you think is incredibly helpful for you in trying to put across a very clear message. Is that right? Yes, I think so, because if I wouldn't have been so strange, then I would have been caught up in the social game that everyone else seems so fond of. I mean, I really love what you're saying. It's, it's really interesting to hear you speaking like that. But I wonder what 
these world leaders think? I mean, how do they treat you? Do they patronize you? Do they treat you like a, an adult? What, 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 what reaction do you get after going on stage and telling them off? Uh, I often get like nervous laughter. They don't know how to react really. And that's, that's fun in a way. Um, but they, I mean, they, they respect me and they, so yeah, they treat me well. Well, but that's good to hear. What about your parents? How have they reacted and how have they adapted to to this incredible activism that you're now spearheading? When I first told them about this school strike idea, they weren't very fond of it. They say, are, aren't, are you sure you want to do this? Isn't there any other way you can do, you can make your voice heard? And then I said, no, I'm going to do this. And I had made up my mind. And um, they said, if you're going to do this, you are going to have to do this all by yourself. We, are, we aren't going to help you. And yeah, but I mean, they, they understand why I'm doing it and they can't stop me from doing it. So, yeah. Uh, and and has, ha, have they changed their habits? I, I, I think I read that your mother, I think it's, it's your mom who doesn't fly on planes anymore. Is that right? Or am I thinking of somebody else? Yeah, my, my whole family has stopped flying. And my mother, she, she, she was an opera singer and she had to fly to be able to do concerts and to work. And so she kind of had to change career. I made her change career because my parents were standing up for like human rights and so on. And then I said, whose human rights are you standing up for while you're living that lifestyle? There are other young people as well who are sort of coming up through the activism ranks. For instance, there's um, Milo Kress, age nine, who started the anti-straw movement. That influenced McDonald's to go straw-free. He did a, an interview with, um, with CNN in 2011. Just listen to this for a moment. Sometimes I think we forget that every straw we use, every piece of plastic, will be here on Earth, somewhere on Earth, even when my grandchildren are born, long after that. I think we should live our lives in a sustainable way so that we leave only good impacts on the, on the Earth. Uh, how, how do you feel about listening to him? He's a lot younger than you now. I mean, you're 16, you just turned 16. He was nine at that time. Um, what do you think it is that is making children essentially teach us a lesson and show us the way? I think that we children, we understand this in a way that adults don't. But I think that many children sort of understand this and they understand if they would got all, get all the information needed, they, will, they would do what was required from them and they would stand up and make their voices heard. And I think that young people, we need to realize that our future is at risk and we need to take action and hold the older generations accountable for what they have done to us. And I think you've also talked about what the solution is. People say, oh, we must go and do some more fact-finding and try to figure out the solutions. What's your answer to that? Uh, we need to understand that we are in a crisis um, and then act from that, because in a crisis you change your behavior, you change your way of thinking, and we need to see the climate crisis as a crisis, which we don't do now, we don't treat it as a crisis. And so, once we do that, we, we adapt. Humans are very adaptable. Mm -hmm. And then some people say that, oh, well, there's no black and white issue and we... But that is not true. The climate crisis is black and white because either we start a chain reaction beyond human control or we don't. Either we stop the emissions or we don't. That is as black or white as it gets. There are no gray areas when it comes to survival. Greta, are you going to keep this up for... Is this going to be your life's work? Yes, I, I think so. I, hopefully I won't be doing this for too long because that means everything's fixed. But I probably will be doing this for a long time. Very well said. Greta Thunberg, thank you so much indeed for joining me. Thank you.